So before we get started today, this is Tahiti, my 2004 Chevy Tahoe. And to get caught up on what I'm about to be doing here today, you're going to want to click the link at the top of the screen. That's going to be into my last video where we started diving into this mess, getting to the bottom of this absolutely horrible noise that the rear end started making. So last video, we pretty much broke into that, found out that the pinion bearing in the rear was shot. So today we're gonna to be installing new pinion bearings, new carrier bearings, putting the diff back in and seeing if the noise goes away. Now, before I can do anything, I have to get this friggin' press out of the corner here. Trans Am exhaust parts, for anybody who's wondering. Just kind of been sitting on those. Trans Am hood, obviously. I did finally get some gas for my TIG welder, which I am gonna be attempting to use on my Trans Am's Y pipe. A lot of parts for the Trans Am in here. I just have to get the fire back in me to get that car back together. I keep getting sidetracked with other projects. And when I do have the time, I'm just like, eh, I don't really feel like working on the Trans Am. So I'm kind of going through that stage again. I guess I don't really have to take it out. I just gotta be able to kind of crawl in there. I do have propane for my heater. It's gonna be that season again soon. Yeah, I can work with that. I don't need to pull it out of the corner. Might as well start with the pinion bearing. There she goes. So pretty much all I'm gonna do here is make sure we got no shims on the bearing because any shims that are under here, and you can see, we have one. We wanna make sure this guy is gonna go right back on under the new bearing. So I'm just gonna kinda of clean everything up a little bit, wipe everything down, and then we'll just slip this guy back on and we'll just press our new bearing directly on top. If you were setting up a new rear end, like if I put gears in this thing, you wouldn't be able to reuse this stuff. You'd have to go through and redo uh, the gear pattern and it's going to be like a whole project. But being I'm not changing the gears, nothing's really going to change. I'm just swapping the bearings out. So that's all cleaned up. We'll get that guy back on there. Let's go find our new bearing. Well, that doesn't look the same. Uh, come on, Rock Auto, really? All right, well, the new race I have fits the old bearing. However, the new bearing is completely different. And even if this is like an improved design, the, the race I got isn't gonna work. So this isn't gonna work. It's not even gonna work with the old race that's in the diff now. All right. Yeah, these look correct. So the new carrier bearings from MotoZone, believe it or not, not Rock Auto, turn out to be correct. This guy's gonna be hard to grab. I'm gonna try it with this first though. There's no space under it like there is with the pinion bearing. So chances are it's gonna rip the cage off, but if it does, I'll have to come in here with a grinding wheel and kind of cut the race off. Yeah, it's been a while since I did a diff. Um, it's not gonna work. I can't actually get under there to press that off with the gear on there. Even with that off, I don't even think they're gonna clear the carrier. So I forgot, but we're just gonna have to cut the bearings off and then the new ones you can easily just press on. Come on, there we go. That's what you want. Uh, 
cut a little into the carrier there. I'm not worried about it. So here's our nice new bearing. And to install this, I'm just gonna take the seal driver. I'm gonna see if I could position this, if the, the press will allow me. And just kind of press onto the end of this thing and see if that'll just push it in. Normally I'd like use one of the races, but I don't have the one I used. I mean, it's cut open. I guess I could probably use it. I'm, I'm afraid it's gonna spread though. Let's try it with this first. There she goes. So we're gonna use the race now to send her the rest of the way home because there's just a slight gap underneath where the bearing uh, meets the carrier. Oh yeah. Now that's all the way down. A hundred bucks for this little Harbor Freight press. 40 years ago. You could do so much stuff with it, even though it's a little tiny 12 ton. All right, this guy's ready to go. Time to locate a pinion bearing. All right, so it's the next day. I think I have the correct bearings after overnighting these things from AutoZone. Now, I guess they just changed the design because even the, this is the bearing that I had already that I just realized wasn't gonna fit not too long ago. And then this is the one that I got now. They're pretty much the same. However, the race that I got from Rock Auto, this was the Rock Auto race. You could see it does not fit this bearing. It's way too small. And if you look, the bearing that came out, the old pinion bearing, this is the race for this style of bearing. Now, after doing a bunch of measuring, they're actually the same size. This just has, I guess this is an improved design. It has larger uh, roller bearings. This just has kind of a spacer down here. And after measuring, they're the same size this way. They're the same size this way. And with the race installed, it's the exact same diameter as the older style with the race. So this should fit. All we gotta do now is pop it on the pinion, pop the races out of the diff, and then just reassemble everything. So we got our shim on there, drop the bearing on. Now I just gotta find something so I can kind of press on that surface. Uh, you know what, I think the way I did this last time, I threw this out prematurely. That was the one I pressed off. This one. Oh, wait, no, this is the outer. Where the f is the inner? That's this one. Boo. All right, so I gotta get this cage off of here. Ow. All right, so look at this. I cut the cage off of the old lower bearing so I can use it as a, uh, you know, something to press it on with. Look at the race on that. It's all friggin' galled up. So that was a noise for sure. I, even though the outside cage, uh, the cage for the outside bearing was a little bit like bent, this was the problem. Who knows what the race looks like on that outer bearing too, so. Look at that, just like that, roll the way down. Awesome. bearing out if you look in here you can see we have these like uh, these little openings in the case so you could just get behind on either side you can see back here they have them for the uh the outer bearing too just get behind that on the other side and you could just knock them out
moving. I think she's there. Holy crap, was that one easier. All right, time for opinion. Now, I don't remember how I did this last time, but um, my pinion seal had a leak. And I think this comes from the factory with a little sleeve on it. I don't remember because this doesn't look like it's in terrible shape. So what happens is you'll get like wear in this yoke and then the seal won't exactly seal the way it's supposed to. So I picked up one of these repair sleeves. This just slides over this. And you can see it's going to give it a nice fresh surface. And like I said, I don't remember if this was on here before. There may have been one from the factory and I just swapped this out. I really don't remember, but I'm pretty much just going to knock this down. And then I got to get, yeah, that's one thing I forgot to get. Damn, I've got to get the actual pinion seal itself. All right, I think that's it. Shouldn't take much. And there we go. Now we have a nice fresh surface that our seal can ride against. So we don't have to worry about this stupid thing leaking again. Now here's a look at our uh, final assembly here as we start putting everything together. So this is how it's gonna sit inside the diff. We have our inner bearing, we have our crush sleeve, then our outer bearing, then we have a new nut. So pretty much we're just going to slide this in like that into the diff. Then we're gonna install our crush sleeve and our crush sleeve is gonna sit against the race here. Then we'll put our outer bearing, we'll put our seal in, we'll put our nut, I mean our yoke, our nut. And then all we're gonna do is gun this thing down and keep checking the preload until we get it where it wants to be. The problem is if you go too far, you tighten it a little too much, that's it, the crush sleeve's gone. You can't loosen it and redo it. So you gotta be really, really careful when you're actually tightening this thing down. They make spacers to eliminate this thing. Um, I decided just to go with the crush sleeve. It's simple, it's cheap. And I've done them before and I got an extra. So if I mess it up, well, let's hope I don't mess it up twice. All right, so I got some gear oil. I got my new seal. I'm just gonna pop our outer bearing into the diff there, put the seal in, and then we'll just put the entire thing uh, with the crushed sleeve in through the back. Let's bring you back here. There we go. Now we'll grab our yoke yoke. We'll get that guy on there. Very, very nice. I forgot the washer. Washer. Nut. Boy, now comes the fun part. We get to crush the crush sleeve. This whole thing has a lot of play. So right now the nut is up against the crush sleeve. So what we're gonna wanna do is tighten that nut down. We're gonna need the impact gun. It's gonna take a lot of power. And we're just gonna give it little blips until this play closes up. And from there, we're gonna keep tightening it little by little until we get the perfect amount of drag on this. We wanna get the perfect amount of bearing preload. So to do that, I have a little inch pound uh, beam torque wrench. And what that's gonna do is measure the rotational torque it takes to spin this. And we're just gonna blip it with the gun and just keep measuring it with that um, until we dial it in close. I think the spec for this is, the range is like 14 to 20 inch pounds. It might be 14 to 19. Uh, but yeah, we pretty much wanna get it somewhere in that range with the torque wrench. Then we know the preload's good. We just slap everything else back together, fill it up, and should be good to go. Here we go. Okay, I did not overshoot it. We are currently at 12 inch pounds of rotational force. I'm gonna dial it in and then I'm gonna show you guys on the torque wrench exactly what I'm looking at. We're at maybe 22. 
Yeah, we're at like 20, 22. The question is, is it worth taking apart and trying with another crush sleeve or will that be good enough? <sighs> you know what, I'm here. Let me try, let me give it one more shot with a new freaking crush sleeve. It's a little tight, a little bit tight. I'm not even gonna bother coming in with the wrench with the, uh, the camera yet. Give me a second, guys. It comes up fast. I gotta really try to sneak up on it this time. I don't have a third try. So I wanna wait a few days for another crush leave to come in. And I do not. Start measuring. Way too loose. We don't even have one. I think that's it. That is it, okay. That is absolutely perfect. You know, I'm fine with that. That's three, six, it's like 17. So now if the torque wrench watch as I rotate this, that's the number we're looking for as it's spinning. All right, so I got everything back together. Um, the caps are torqued down for the diff, got the drive shaft on, got the parking brake adjusted, got the calories back on. All that's really left to do is pop the sway bar back up, situate the parking brake cables, and drop the pan bar back in. Before I do that, I'm going to put the cover back on, got it all cleaned up, got a nice new gasket. We're losing daylight quick, so I want to get this thing filled up and at least spin it over to see if the noise is gone. And yes, I got the C-clips in. I got the little 8 millimeter bolt through. Don't ask me the torque spec. Now, I don't know what to put in here as far as gear oil goes. I got 7590, I think that's the correct weight, but as far as the additives go, it is a G80 diff, and just Google random, you know, forum post, people will say, this doesn't take a limited slip additive, but it has clutches in it, so I would think that it would. However, I haven't been able to find um, AutoZone doesn't sell a gear oil that doesn't say contains limited slip additive. Like, this is the cheapest I could find is Valvoline, and even that says contains limited slip, ad limited slip additive. So it's getting it regardless, even though I'm pretty sure it's supposed to take it. Because I know GM sells the little black bottles um, that are specifically for their diffs. That is the additive, so this should do the same thing. clips are shot. I mean, for now, that'll work. That's good. This is a little, eh. But you know what? For now, it's whatever. I try to position these guys so nothing rubs. Ugh. I mean, that's not gonna rub the tire or anything. That'll probably be all right. but I can't hear jack shit. We're at 70 miles an hour right now. Oh yes. The 4L60 lives another day. 
It was just her diff making the noise. So I am very out of focus and also very, very happy. I'm gonna go get some diff fluid, top it off. I mean, that was it. The pinion bearing was bad. The noise is fixed. I think we're ready to get back working on the Trans Am.